Hello ladies and gentlemen, um, Alex here, and uh, it's getting really hot. Hey guys, Alex here. Um, I'm actually waiting, currently waiting for all of my pieces back there to finish um, drying uh, after spraying them down with uh, top coat. So um, I figured I'd just kind of make some content for you guys while, uh, you know, while I wait for that to happen. So what I have here is I have a bunch of spray cans that I have left from, uh, from um, from moving to a, to an apartment where I could not airbrush. I, like that apartment had only one window, which was actually in the kitchen. So there was absolutely no way that I was going to be airbrushing, um, in my previous apartment. But now that I've moved to another place, I have absolutely no use for these spray cans. And I mean, that's a lot of stuff here. I've got, you know, a whole thing of like, you know, clear coats here. And a whole bunch of other like uh, Mr. Hobby and Tamiya spray cans here, and you know it's it's a shame. I don't want to waste any of these perfectly good colors. And on top of that, there are some colors that you know Tamiya or Mr. Hobby uh, spray cans come out in that I you can't buy in the bottle to you know thin and use in your airbrush. So I figured why not make a cool video on uh, how to decant these babies and use them in your airbrush. And one of the cons um, or the drawbacks as far as using uh, spray cans is the fact that you have no control over the amount of paint that comes out uh, because every single can inside is pre-filled with paint, thinner, as well as propellant. There's no way to control the amount of paint that comes out, so every time you push down on the, on the nozzle, it's just going to spray out a fixed amount of paint and propellant, and that's basically how you end up losing a lot of money as far as using spray cans go. I mean, obviously the other, the benefit of using spray cans is the fact that you can, you know, take these cans outside, it's portable, you can take them outside and, and spray away and, I mean, pros and cons. So pretty much what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of these cans, I'm going to decant them and try to show you the process as far as um, decanting these spray cans and using them into your airbrush or preparing them and uh, storing them into your airbrush. What you're gonna need is some form of container, obviously, uh, so that you can store your paints in them. You want to have a container that is large enough to put in all of the paint that uh, that you're gonna be taking out of the can. Now, a typical uh, spray can, like a Tamiya or Mr. Color, um, has a 100 milliliter net volume, okay? So you want to have something around that around that ballpark as uh, as far as that goes. That's only if you are decanting a full unused can of uh, spray paint. So I'm like I'm like the guy that uses these bottles now. Now if uh, if you have a spray can that's you know like almost on its way out, or even if all if you have a spray can that has uh, that you've used and all the propellant is gone, you can actually use this method on. Um, and getting some of that leftover paint out of the can as well because there's actually a bit of paint that's left over even after the propellant is all gone You're, the, the can is not actually empty now with the propellant and all that stuff after it goes out it'll probably be closer to roughly around uh you know like 65 maybe 70 milliliters the first method that we have um this is, I guess, what we can call the straw method. And actually, there are two uh, different kinds of straw method that are actually available. Um, it requires the use of two different kinds of straws. You can either use um, a very large uh, diameter, like, bubble tea straw, um, or, you know, a standard, you know, drinking straw that you have here. There are two different kinds of straws that we can use. Now, the first one requires us to actually affix this small, tiny straw onto the end of our our, stick, uh, our spray can, right? So what you can do is either use some blue tack or maybe masking tape, and I have some here, and you're gonna basically affix this straw 
to the tip of our our nozzle here. So I'm gonna try to try to do that. Now the reason you want to do this is so that you can kind of keep the the straw fixed and also so that you don't have any paint kind of leaking out towards you because of the sheer amount of pressure that is coming out of the straw. So um, I mean no matter what you're gonna lose some paint um, but I think you know this this will serve its purpose I think. Um, you just want to kind of just uh, nice and tight I'm just kind of going overboard because what the hell why not and yeah just you know make it janky and so here we have our spray can that's attached to this uh, spray can uh, straw derp you want to make sure that you have adequate ventilation if you're going to do it indoors. I don't recommend it. It's actually quite sunny out. So I'm actually going to take uh, all of this stuff and we're going to go outside. Now for the first method, all we have to do is take our bottle here and we have our spray can attached to the small, you know, thin straw that we have. Right? And what you can do is you can, I mean, if you want, you could probably, uh, you know, put some tape over this and cover it, but I'm not going to bother with that. And basically what you're going to do is take the spray can and your bottle here, and you're just going to spray straight into the bottle. And eventually you're just gonna have this all paint come out. Now mind you, this is the this is the whole can. This is a brand new can, so it's gonna it's gonna take a lot of paint to get out. If you can see the propellant is super super cold, so the straws are not starting to ice up, hopefully at the top near my finger. This bottle's almost full. That's about it. I don't know, I don't want any water going in there from the from the icing on the straw. But uh, here we have it. Now here's the problem that we have. You do not want to shake this can, okay? Because if you I don't know if you can tell, but it's still like bubbling a little bit. Now if I take if I take something. the end of the straw maybe it's gonna bubble can you see that it's gonna bubble and the more you agitate it the more it'll bubble out that's the propellant still uh, evaporating and uh, coming out so you want to you really want to make sure that you do not agitate the paint um, if you can see it's I mean it's just kind of moving around and kind of mixing itself as we speak and yeah, so you can kind of see it swirling on the outsides into the inside. So what you want to do is you don't want to you don't want to make this airtight because the propellant is still evaporating. So what you want to do is you want to take take a cap and just kind of loosely put it on, and kind of just kind of leave it for a couple of days until all the uh, all the propellant is gone. You do not want to shake this can or this uh, this bottle. Okay. No. So that's uh, that's method number one. Okay. Now for our second um, straw method, um, this one probably takes a little bit less uh, prep work as far as um, taking the paint out goes. What you're going to do is you're going to spray into the straw 
as the paint is going into the straw, all the gas is obviously, you know, by nature it's gonna rise. So the gas is come up, gonna come out the top of the paint, and all the paint that's kind of, you know, gathering up through the walls of the straw is gonna flow down into the bottle, right? So. All the gas is gonna come out the top and the, the paint is gonna come out the bottom. And that's it. This is the TS83 Tamiya Metallic Silver. That's the end of the second straw method. Now the second method is a bit more dangerous, I guess you can say. Um, I have here another can of uh, Mica Red. Okay? Um, and this one actually is almost empty. So I'm gonna use this as a good example. Now, um, this is method number two, okay? Now what you can do is, instead of using a straw to spray it all out, this one will obviously waste a little bit of paint because you're not gonna get all this, all this paint on the inside of the straw that you wasted. Now this would require you actually puncturing the can. Now some people use, you know, like a straight tool and a hammer and just kinda poke a hole into it. I basically just took a pair of, you know, nippers and just kinda punctured the hole by cutting into it a little bit. So that's what I'm gonna do right now. Now you want to cut, you want to puncture it facing away from you, so all the propellant will go away from you, okay? And by doing so, you're gonna lose a little bit of paint. It's, it happens sometimes, that's why you don't wanna shake the paint. Here's what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna puncture this and hopefully I don't get paint in my face, okay? Okay, now what you can do is you can just take one, one end of the nipper and just kind of uh, put a small hole in it. Now all the propellant is coming out and no paint is coming out. All right? And that's almost, uh, that's pretty much it. And you're just gonna wait for all the propellant to seep out of this can and come back later. And then we're gonna open up this baby. Okay? So you're gonna leave this in a, you know, well-ventilated area or maybe outside. So I'm probably gonna just gonna stick it on that windowsill back there. And from there, we'll, uh, We'll come back in a few hours and uh, see where we're where we're at as far as this uh, this can here goes. Okay. All right, ladies and gents, um, I've left the can to kind of uh, let off the propellant pretty much the rest of the day, about five or six hours. So most of the propellant is probably out of this uh, this here uh, spray can. Okay. Um, here I have the uh, the can of Mica Red that I had uh, I had canned it earlier. Um, it's almost full, but um, you can kind of tell that the level went down quite a bit um, compared to before. That's actually quite interesting, you know, because uh, all is you can probably tell from the level dropping down that the the uh, the propellant um, evaporated and thus leading us to have uh, have a lower level as far as uh, net volume inside the uh, inside the container goes. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this here can and I'm going to start prying away at it. Now you could probably get away with using a, a can opener of some sorts as well, but uh, I'm just going to use these uh, old nippers that I have here and uh, I'm going to get going on, uh, on opening this baby up. And you can just kind of cut it open, um, not really much to it. And just uh, you know, cut away at it. Um, just you know, be really careful because it's gonna hurt a lot if you ever end up cutting yourself. Um, and also try to make sure that the you know the white paint and stuff like that, none of the flecks get on the inside of the paint because you don't want any of these flecks to go inside the uh, um, you know inside your thinned paint mixture. So. Um, I'm just cutting away at it, little by little. 
It's a lot hotter out there in the day, but I think I should open it up a little bit now. Maybe I'm going to cut a little bit more. Now inside is going to be like a, a straw that the paint and stuff comes out. Um, you don't need, you don't really need any of that. And here we go. That's what we got uh, so far. Okay. And inside we have all this paint here. Okay. So what we're going to do is put the rest of this off. I can just twist it off. I think I can just twist it off. Yeah. There we go. small bit off. No. There we go. So here we have our mixture here. I'm just going to pour it into this uh, this here micro red bottle that we have prepared. Okay. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to kind of bend it a bit so I can kind of make like a little spout. Now this serves two purposes. There's two marbles in there so I'm going to keep the marble out for now. I might just throw the marble in there as well. What the hell, why not? And, uh, that's about it. So, all the propellant's gone, and we'll leave in just a thin paint on the inside. And you can tell, it's actually still bubbling. It's still bubbling. Um, and again, same thing. Uh, you don't want to agitate it too much. Because uh, once you start shaking it and stuff, it's going to keep bubbling like that. So you want to keep this, uh, you know, loosely capped for another day or so. And then uh, you're good to go. So I think that's about it as far as decanting your own uh, paint goes. And uh, I'll catch you guys in the next video. Hi. What's up, bro? <laughs> oh, okay. you got, you got that. <laughs> <laughs>